Hi, everybody. It's David, and welcome back to another episode of Backstage Pass. Every couple of weeks, we're going to be coming to you with uh, interviews, reviews, lots of great messaging, events that are happening in and around the community. So check us out every couple of weeks. Right now, we've got a great interview coming up with Canada's most produced and certainly one of Theatre Orangeville's most popular playwrights, the incredible Norm Foster. Check out this great conversation I had recently with Norm. Norm Foster, my friend, my friend. Yes. I, I'm, I'm sitting here in my office, and just before you came on, I have all the posters from all the seasons since yeah. I've been here. And I went around, and I kept, there have been 22 different productions of a Norm Foster play here at Theatre Orange Hill, going wow. right back to The Last Resort. Wow, that's great. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah, happy about that. Yeah. Welcome, my uh, friend. How are you? You're well, you're safe, you're happy. Yeah, I'm out here in New Brunswick. Everything's fine out here. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a low, uh, a low count of uh, COVID uh, cases, and uh, it's a nice, sunny, crisp fall day. Yeah. I'm, uh, well, I'm we fine. had snow here the other day, and I know. Which, when we get snow, that usually means Foster's coming. That usually down. means I'm on the way. <laughs> <laughs> you must have thought about coming to Orangeville, and that so, and then it snowed, and just so everybody out there, when whenever Norm comes, it, it, even in August, it seems that I know it's true. It's horrible. We, we, no. So uh, somebody was asking me the other day, why New Brunswick? What's the attract? What's the, what's that attraction for you, Norm? For you know for, what? Before you call back in, Before I even got into theater, I was back in 1979, I was working in radio in Kingston, and I got a job offer from Fredericton, and I thought, well, I'll fly out here and have a look and be interviewed. So I came out here, and I just, I don't know, I fell in love with the place, and uh, moved out here in '79, and moved back to Ontario, I think, around 1998 and just wasn't happy there and, and, and missed Fredericton so I came back and I've uh, been here ever since yeah so it, I, I think it's just it, it's it's the it's the pace it's the lifestyle and it's the people that uh, keep me here I, I just love it here yeah well it's always about the people for sure I mean yeah. do you find that do you find that the province do you find that Fredericton inspires you I guess it, I guess friendships and that that inspires you, know, you to create or yeah you know what um <clears throat> most of my plays are, are set in small towns and uh, I don't know if, if, if it's because I live here now. I, I think it may be because I, I, I started writing here. And that's, that's the reason for that. Even though I grew up in, in the Toronto area, I think that uh, living here now and, uh, and uh, I mean, living here for almost you know, 20 years, I, um, I think this, this is, I, I consider this home now. This is my home. Right. And, uh, I wouldn't leave. And, uh, I, I just, and, 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 and it's conducive for me to writing. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's inspired, yeah. I, I kind of I feel the same way about Orangeville. I mean, they're very kind of similar in in, in yeah, some they are. regards. Yeah. That they're smaller communities, very tightly knit. Again, it's about the people. Very creative centers. There's so much. Yeah, it always blows me away about you know the extent of, of things that's happening in New Brunswick, the Atlantic Arts Fest. You know, all yeah. of, of it's a very vibrant kind of art scene, and it's the same kind of sure. thing. It is. Yeah. yeah. So because yeah. again, you were you know a, a radio guy. Mm -hmm. um, and the 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 switch into theater uh, was kind of a happenstance thing for you, wasn't it? It was. It was just you know I was doing a morning show with a the guy who was doing sports on the morning show named Peter Spurway. His mother ran the local uh, amateur theater group, and he was going to audition for a a part in a play uh, called Harvey. The you old know, you know James Stewart movie with the, the six foot invisible puka and uh, the, the the invisible rabbit. And uh, he said, "Do you want to come with me?" And I said, "No, nah, I don't know anything about theater." And, Know how to act, and he said, "Well, come on, it's just for moral support anyway." And I, I went along, and and uh, I got to talked into uh, reading for the part, and I I, I got the, the lead. I got the Elwood P. Dowd part. Wow, <laughs> it's kind of easy. Maybe I'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, when I started to to actually I had to learn the lines, I was terrified, just terrified. <laughs> so that was my first experience, my first exposure to theater. It really was my my first exposure to theater was that back in high school. I did a, 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 a what they, they call a theater of the absurd by Eugene Inesco, oh. rhinoceros. And yes, I, was, I know that play. Yeah, I was in that. that was my, those were my two first experiences in theater. Yeah, yeah. Zero Mostel. I think that's the play that made Zero Mostel. I think famous. you're right. I think Honestly, it was. Yeah. I think even yeah. before Fiddler on the Roof or anything like that. Yeah. So, then how did the how did the writing thing come about? Then as a, you started that you started as an actor and then I started as an actor. We did. Uh, uh, Harvey, then we did uh, Our Second Old Lace, and Butterflies Are Free, and I thought, gee, maybe I could actually write one of these things, because, you know, 
in radio, I, I sit in a studio for three hours every morning and I, I would just talk to myself. That's what I do, talk to myself. And I thought, maybe I know something about dialogue. And so I, I sat down and, and wrote a play. Uh, my first play was called Friends and Family. Nobody's ever, ever read that. I won't let anybody read that. But then I wrote one called uh, Sinners that uh, the man who was running the local professional theater, uh, Malcolm Black, he, uh, he asked me if, I, if he could read it. And I showed it to him. He said, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And he, they put on my first professional play, and I just, it just went from there. It just, and then I wrote the Melville Boys, which really, you know, got my foot in the door. And uh, it just, it, I just kept writing because I just love writing these stories, and, and that's how, that's how it started, and that's it's still going like that. Yeah. So if Peter, who, because I know Peter, I, I obviously yeah. the theater thing didn't work out for Peter for sure, although. No, it didn't. <laughs> it <laughs> became. He became the publicity person for the Halifax airport. That's where he went. <laughs> He's running the joint, isn't he? Dad? I know, I'm running the joint, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if Peter hadn't said, come on, uh, be there as a friend because I need the moral support, what do you think, would the, would the career path have stayed in radio? What, what, I think what, I would what still you want to do? What, what was your, when you were a kid, what was your, what was your career path? What was your vision? Did you, you have know, one? It's funny. it's funny, even as, a, as in high school, I thought maybe I could be a writer for television. And when it came time to graduate from uh, high school into university, I went to the guidance counselor at my high school, West Hill Collegiate in Scarborough. And I said, you know, I think I, I think I want to be a writer for television. And she said, well, then you better go sit on the steps of the CBC because that's the only way you're going to get there. <laughs> what? That, that's your advice? Go sit on the steps of the CBC? So uh, I, I went to uh, uh, Confederation College in, uh, in uh, Thunder Bay. And a professor there said, you know, there's no real market for uh, television writers in Canada. I said, well, why, why do you have the course? He said, well, you know, <laughs> it pays the bills. <laughs> so I, I transferred out of that course and, and just went into radio and, and, and TV arts and mainly uh, uh, concentrating on radio. And that's how I got into the radio business. I completely forgot about the writing business until I got back to Fredericton. And in the, that little amateur theater group. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. I was I I I, I was on, I I I got accepted the the radio and television arts program at Rye High. Yeah. And, uh, I, I wanted to go into radio. I have always been I've always just loved the medium. I love really? yeah. I love when I get a chance to do the voice. You know, I I get to do our radio commercials and stuff yeah. like that. It makes me feel like I have a a voiceover career. I just I love it. I love the medium. I love I would you know I, I mean I love going to see the Blue Jays. But yeah. I love sit like I would rather listen to the Blue Jays on radio <laughs> than I would watch it on TV. Like I just, yeah. you know, it's such a game of the mind. But just those great announcers and those great and the, all the you know like Jack Denon and all those great old sure. Leaf voices, you know Ward Cornell and just Ward Cornell, great. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I still be radio was a great job. It was a fun job. I had a ball doing, it. and I'd still be doing it today if I hadn't stumbled into the theater by accident. I'd, I'd be doing radio, and I'd be happy doing it. But didn't you tell me at one time that there was kind of a clown thing or something? Oh, or... you know, at, around the same time I was, <laughs> this is funny. Speaking of Ryerson, I couldn't get into Ryerson because I didn't have the marks. I thought, well, what am I gonna do now? I can't be a, a, if I, a writer if I don't go to Ryerson or I can't be, a, be in broadcasting. So I applied to the Barnum and, what's it, Barnum and Bailey Brothers Clown College in Orlando, Florida, and I got accepted. And I was going to go be a clown, a circus clown. <laughs> and, and just before, I, like a week before I was supposed to go down there, uh, I got accepted into uh, Centennial College in Toronto. And then from there, I went to Confederation College in Thunder Bay. But I was that close to being a circus clown. <laughs> well, you know, because I, I think you might have shared that story because one of my... Uh... One of my most favorite times, I because you know we've worked together a couple of times on stage, but yeah. um, was seeing you and Billy Vickers do "Waiting for Gatto." Oh yeah, and I think it was even before I knew that story. But we sat in that theater in Sudbury, and the two of you, and you know, I mean, you're six four and Billy's four six, mm -hmm. and I mean, it was just, and I thought. I find I I understood the play for the first time. I went, these are two clowns, and then I thought, <laughs> uh, I might yeah. have shared that comment with you because then I went, my God, they're. They're, he's just a natural clown. So there you go. I, I, since then, I've always seen you with a red nose. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm waiting for Gatto, and that's. Uh, I never thought I'd wind up doing that play, but I did. And uh, quite frankly, a lot of time I didn't know what I was saying. 
but uh, I just plowed through it. It was it was it was fun working with Billy Vickers. It was fun. It was we had a great time. Yeah, I, th I think that's part of the thing of the play is nobody really knows what it's about. I know that's right. Or everybody's just waiting for something to happen. <laughs> that's right. It's true. <laughs> so yeah. I I know because I you you know you've shared with me in the past about your kind of regimen of writing. You get you're an early morning guy. I guess this harkens back to radio. Yeah, getting up at four a.m. or whatever you had to do to do a morning show. Yeah, where does that spring from uh, i mean i i'm not a writer as you well know i'm a talker but i love working with writers but where does that wellspring come from that that you get up every day because you're pretty dedicated with it right i mean you write every day don't you i do i do i'm, I'm writing today in fact and um you know people say you must be really disciplined to do that and it's not a, it's not being disciplined in fact i'm pretty lazy i'm pretty lazy a uh, very lazy guy but I just love writing so much. I love climbing out of that world that I created every morning and uh, and being with these characters that for me, it's just, uh, I can't wait to get started. And I write from maybe seven till most days till noon. Right on. That's, that's enough. And then I just knock off. And, uh, and I'm always thinking of something, either what I'm working on or what I'm going to work on. So I'm always thinking of some story or some character or some play that I'm, uh, I'm right. either working on or I'm, or I'm going to, yeah. So these have been these have been crazy times. I mean, yeah. the last seven or gosh, is it eight months now? Whatever it is, it seems like an Horrible. eternity. Yeah. It seems like an eon. Um, in the early days of all of this, were, were you writing or or did you sort of, or is that just something that's come you know, up? Has, have, you, have you been reinvigorated or, you know? I, only lately, you know, when, I, when, when it first hit, I was in Costa Rica on a vacation and came home and then that just didn't feel like writing anymore. All this stuff was happening. Theaters were, were closing down and canceling shows. And I thought, oh, geez, you know, I just, and a lot of artists I talked to felt the same way. It just didn't feel like working at, in our, at our craft anymore. And I, I shut down for about, uh, from about uh, March till I'd say June, middle of July, I shut down. And then I started writing again. And since then I've, I've finished, I've got, I've got, I've been stockpiling plays. I've got like three, uh, three on the shelf, you know, wow. two, that, two that were already written, one that I just finished and one that I'll, I'll be finished like next week. So it's, um, wow. yeah, it's, 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 I'm back into it full, full speed now. Yeah. So our audiences can, will be looking forward that there's, that there's a, there's a whack of Norm Foster plays still to come. There are, even if I, even if I pass away now, God forbid, there'd still be Norm Foster plays for years to come. So, I mean, so, so I, I, cause I think I said to say, cause how many plays are there now, Norm? I mean, there's like, was it six musicals? Five Seven musicals. musicals and Seven uh, musicals. A to including the musicals and uh, three one act plays. There are about 66 plays now. So if we lost you tomorrow, we could do a play every year at Theater Orangeville for the next 44 years and not no repeat problem. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> And of course, now that you have a festival named after you, the Foster Festival, yeah. of course, which is a theater that we love, Lisa yeah. and I love, and of course we we try to get down to St. Catharines. Yeah, thanks for supporting it the way you do. I really appreciate. Well, it too, I mean, yeah. it's it's a great yeah. company, Emily. You guys, Emily Oriel, you guys are doing a that audiences know uh, know Emily. Emily was actually yeah. here on stage in in the last play we did. Yeah, that's right. Three performances. Yeah. Emily was with us, and she's the executive yeah. director of the of the Foster Festival down in St. Catharines. It's a it's a great theater, and we, you know, we look forward to continuing. Creative partnership with yes, for sure, yeah. And, and, a lot of a lot of things yeah. planned in the future. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Yeah, it's exciting. Favorite play of yours? <laughs> what's what's the one? Because audiences ask me all the time. Well, what's you know, Norm's favorite play of his? You one? know, there are there are two that I've just completed, but I wouldn't mention them because they haven't been produced yet. So oh, I would say of all the plays that have been produced, I think it's Hilda's Yard. It's yeah, that's favorite. a great show. Yeah, yeah and I, favorite role because you're on stage a lot. Oh, my favorite role. You and I if I, we got to sit down one day and count up how many times you and I have been on stage together. Yeah, I think of all the and the one of my favorite role is probably the one that uh, you and I did a few years ago called The Love List, where I played uh, Leon. Uh, that might be my favorite role. And then, of course, we, we've done uh, Jonas and Barry in the Home, where I played Jonas. And that's a fun role, too. But I think, you know, Leon might edge that out just by a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I love The Love List. We did that production i don't know five or six times i guess yeah 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 I, I love that role too and i also love roly he was one of my yeah uh, roly one of my favorite roles yeah. of, of, of getting yeah. a chance yeah well jonas and barry must be fun for you to do because you co-star with such a devilishly handsome and devastatingly talented <laughs> 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 you know, i like working with aaron you know aaron uh, oh of course <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, no it's uh <clears throat> jonas and barry is uh i think we've 
we may have done that more often than we did the love list, I think, haven't we? Uh, well, we did, I think it was 204 times when we, yeah. when the last time we did Jonas and Barry, and, and hopefully, knock on wood, God willing, there'll be some opportunities. Oh, there'll be some other, yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, working with uh, you and, and Aaron, it's been, it's been a real treat. Well, I'm, been, finally, I, I'm finally the right age. <laughs> I know. Let me tell you, I'm funny playing somebody my own age. <laughs> it's I know it's terrifying. It's terrifying. The Boca play. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm playing my future now. <laughs> so, what you writing, my friend. What is bring, what is bringing you joy these days? What's what's bringing you joy? Just writing and. Geez, you know, writing. I tell you, that's about it. Because uh, we're around the house. I, I I go and meet with a couple of friends uh, uh, twice a week for a, a beer and uh, talk about things and. Uh, I got uh, my wife and uh, two kids at home here, and uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much my yeah, world. pretty busy. Pretty much my world, yeah. Well, I hope you're making uh, Peter's brother John, who audiences, of course, know from John Spurway, playwright. Yeah. Uh, I hope you're I hope you're stiffing John with the bill as often. Yeah, as yeah, you know, yeah, of course, yeah. I, I, I write it off as like I, I'm mentoring John. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> he owes me a couple, so tell him he owes he needs to buy you beer. <laughs> Yeah, my friend. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Thanks, Norm. Oh, Thanks for taking great, your time. David. Thank you. It's good to see We're, you. We can't uh, wait uh, to get back here. We've uh, just to yeah. team folks. You and I have already talked about yeah. something to happen here. Hopefully, as soon as we're as soon as we're back to yeah. to get you back on stage here. And of course, we always look forward to you know to, uh, to I, you know your latest uh, work see, here. And we love doing it. I love Orangeville. I love Theater Orangeville, and it's 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 one of my favorite, my, maybe the favorite, my favorite place to, to work. And I just can't wait. To get back to it yeah can't wait well soon my friend soon all right thanks norm thank you bye-bye as you can see from this stack of paper in my hands, there is a lot of stuff that is happening here in our very own community. The staff at the Orangeville Visitors Information continue to support the community and are really happy to serve you in person. Curbside service is available at 200 Lakeview Court. Uh, call, uh, I've got the number here, 519-415-8687 or go to tourism at orangeville.ca. You can uh, give them a call. They'll give you information on everything that's happening in and around the community. If you wanna come over, you can knock on the door. Uh, we can't let you in, but they'll uh, they'll share information um, through the door. There's uh, the farmer's market. The Orangeville farmer's market has moved indoors, which is uh, great news. Uh, all your favorite or many of your favorite local vendors will uh, still be participating. The new location is at the Tony Rose Arena, and it starts uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, November the 7th. Uh, every other Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., go on to downtownorangeville.ca for more information. Uh, Christmas, I guess Halloween's just over, so I guess we can start talking about Christmas. Christmas is going to be celebrated in Orangeville in a very different way this year uh, with the Holiday Lights Extravaganza, the Town of Orangeville, the Downtown Orangeville BIA, and the Optimist Club of Orangeville have joined together to uh, light up the town in a really big way. There's going to be lighting displays in all kinds of various parts of the community. That starts on Sunday, November 22nd. And again, go to orangeville.ca because there's an online map, I think, that shows you all the locations. Uh, as part of that holiday lights extravaganza, the BIA and businesses downtown will be staying open late. Please, 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 it is absolutely essential that all of us living here in this community support local businesses, especially in these times. Our restaurants, our retail people down on Broadway and throughout the entire town of Orangeville need our support, deserve our support, and we got to give it to them. Uh, so they're going to be uh, staying open late downtown uh, Thursdays and Fridays. That starts very soon. That's November the 12th. Uh, and go to downtown Orangeville, uh, downtownorangeville.ca for more information. Remembrance Day this year is going to look a little different here in Orangeville. Um, Wednesday, November the 11th, of course, at, uh, at 10.57 a.m., You'll be able to view the ceremony that's going to be taking place here at the Orangeville Cenotaph. That's going to be live streamed on the Town of Orangeville's Facebook page. Uh, Rogers TV, Cable 63, for those of you who have Rogers, is going to record the ceremony and air it on the 11th. It's going to be aired at 6, 8, 9, and 10.30 p.m. And, of course, the uh, attendance to the event is restricted. Um, it's just restricted to the ceremony participants due to public health guidelines. So check it out on uh, Orangeville's Facebook page or Rogers TV. Recently, the town of Orangeville gave up their uh, arts and cultural awards. Congratulations to all the winners last week and the week before. And a special shout out to our own Lisa LeHue, our technical director here at Theatre Orangeville, who was named Arts Educator of the Year. And now, 
our very good friend John Daniel is here with a review of yet another really cool movie. Thanks, John. Take it away. Okay, we're doing another one. Last time I did this, I recommended a movie that you were never gonna find on any Canadian streaming platforms. The only way that you were gonna watch that movie is if you rented it or if you bought it. Which is fine, but it's 2020. I don't know how many of you guys are still renting movies off the internet. So today I'm recommending a movie that you can find for sure on Amazon Prime. For those of you who don't have Prime, check again. Sometimes you can buy something off of Amazon and then they'll just give it to you for free, but nobody tells you about it. The movie that we're looking at today comes from a pair of filmmakers who we've all at the very least heard of named Joel and Ethan Coen. The Coen Brothers! Titans of the industry, the Coen Brothers! Fargo, Raising Arizona, Burn After Reading! Coen Brothers! But we're not just looking at their greatest hits here, we're looking at one of their lesser known films called Inside Luland Davis. And as per usual with the Coen Brothers, it's filled with some of the quirkiest characters in cinema, some of which played by Carey Mulligan, John Goodman, Justin Timberlake and Adam Driver, who I found out graduated from Juilliard just four years after Oscar Isaac, who plays the titular role in this movie, both of which you would have seen together in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Without giving too much away, the film follows Luland Davis, a musician who's just trying to catch a break and return his cat safely back to his apartment. And although the film didn't receive the same praise they got for some of their earlier work, they did manage to score a nomination at the Golden Globes for Best Motion Picture, Comedy or Musical, and Best Original Song, which they co-wrote with one of their actors, Justin Timberlake. So, today, tomorrow, a month from now, celebrate the quirkiness of the Coen brothers with Inside Luland Davis. And tell us what you think. We want to know what you're watching when you're not at your theater. Even if you hated it, we want to know, because in the words of the Coen brothers and the dude himself... That's just like your own opinion, man. Take it easy, everybody. See you soon. Thanks, John. I haven't seen the movie, but I'm certainly going to check it out. And remember, the dude abides, dude. Uh, you need to check out Theater Orangeville Presents online. This is uh, We pivoted, as you know, to online programming. We've got a fantastic amount of programming that's coming up to you over the course of the next few months. Um, uh, first on tap is Rage Against Violence. This show is being created in partnership with Family Transition Place. Please buy a ticket for it. Support the initiatives of, of all the work that's being done at Family Transition Place. Tickets are $25. Um, the presentation happens online on our Theatre Orangeville Presents, uh, November 5th, 6th, and 7th. So please check that out. We have packaged a subscription package for you. You can now resubscribe to Theatre Orangeville for a mere $119, regularly $140. It's a saving of 15%. You're gonna have access as a subscriber. Uh, I mean, you can buy single tickets too, but it's always better to be a subscriber. To see uh, A Christmas Carol, we're going to be doing a read of A Christmas Carol featuring some really great celebrities and local bon vivants from around your community. That's going to uh, air from December 4th to January the 3rd. And then from December 18th to January 3rd, we're premiering Rockin' Round the Christmas Tree, a fantastic holiday adventure for the entire family starring Lisa Way and the Wayward Wind Band. As we get into the new year, you can look forward to a presentation called Broadway Bound, which is going to showcase the talents of recent participants in Theatre Orangeville and other arts-related um, uh, organizations here in the community. We're going to be showcasing young people who are now getting out into the world and making a huge difference in this community and beyond in the arts world. Brave New Work, uh, that's a musical theater uh, presentation. And then Brave New Works is showcasing uh, the creations of new writers and uh, it's it's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be a little out there. And then An Affair of the Heart, which is a fantastic way that we're going to be bringing music and romance and the splendor of Valentine's to one and all. And then uh, in late February, we're going to be reprising and, and bringing back our script tease play rating series. We're going to be presenting uh, some readings of works that we have in development that you're going to see on your stage as soon as we can. As always, as always, as always, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, stay tuned, and we'll see you in your theater online really soon. Take care.